Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below. Hello everyone, welcome. This is Dr. Jacobs. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to stop Morton's neuroma pain. But before we do that, we need to understand what is Morton's neuroma, the causes, the symptoms, and how the body heals. Because by understanding this information, the treatment will make a lot of sense. And a lot of those treatments you actually can do it at home. So make sure you watch this video to the end. So before we start, actually, we need to understand what is Morton's neuroma. So it's a very um, common to have it in the foot between the third and fourth toes. And it's usually thickening of the tissue, as you can see it here, thickening of the tissue. And you start to have a burning, uh, painful sensation in the ball of your foot and sometimes in a tingling and numbness in your toes in here. So this is an image where it's usually located, the pressure on the nerve and actually the inflammation and the scar tissue compressing on the nerve in here that cause a lot of symptoms in this area. So it usually feels like you're standing on a piece of rock uh, when you stand on your foot. And usually this is the area that you feel st uh, the standing on a piece of rock on. So what are the risk factors? So risk factors, actually repetitive impacts like runners, uh, jumpers, or um, rock climbing. One of the big risk factors are high heels, especially for female. I see that a lot in my clinic, uh, female that been wearing high heels for a very long time because that's actually putting more pressure on the, that area that actually causes inflammation and uh, causing the uh, Morton's neuroma, that's actually a risk factor, very huge. The other risk factor, and it's overlooked by a, by, by a lot of healthcare provider and patient, is abnormal gait. If you walk um, not the normal gait parent, there's a very high chance you might causing uh, Morton's neuroma. And I'm gonna go over the proper way of walking in other video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to get notification about uh, future videos. Foot deformity, and this is very common with someone if they have uh, bunions or hammer toes or flat foot or high arches. So uh, like it's, it's abnormal structure. And there's some stuff we can do for abnormal structure. There's a special shoes we can have to, it's not a special shoe, a special sizing of the shoes. And I will go over that in other videos. Those are the risk factors. So the, ma the main question we have is how to treat it, how to stop that pain. In order for me to answer this question, we really need to understand normal healing cycle, how our body heal, because it will make a lot of sense, the treatment, because we're going to base it on healing cycle, not just treating the symptoms. So normal healing cycle, I'm going to use external paper cut, but the same process happened internally in that area and causing the uh, Morton's neuroma. We don't see it internally because the skin is covering it. Actually, some of you, if you have severe inflammation, you can feel the swelling and you can see visually that one side swells more than the other side. So the first stage of healing is inflammation. As you see in the image here, uh, swelling, redness, the blood starts to rush to that area and you start to have pain and decreased function. Second stage of healing is a proliferation stage. That's when your body starts to build the scar tissue, as you can see here in the second image. During this stage, there is a scar tissue, fascia restrictions, muscle spasm, and trigger point. It's a cascade of event. Think about this way. If your body does not build the scar tissue, it's open wound susceptible for infection. So actually, scar tissue is very essential for our survival. The problem is if you have excessive scar tissue that compressing on the nerve and that causes the Morton, Morton's neuroma symptoms and irritate the nerve with the inflammation so you start to have numbness and tingling. We need a scar tissue. Scar tissue is very important for our body to glue the tear tissue, but too much of that, it actually causes uh, a lot of uh, symptoms like nerve pain. 
perfect scenario during the maturation stage actually our body gets rid of the scar tissue and everything clears up that could take days weeks months or years with chronic condition uh, for example the morton's neuroma chronic uh, pain usually your body going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation so you have excessive inflammation in that area and you can feel it and also you will feel that rock that rock feeling typically it's a scar tissue that pushing on the nerve irritating the nerve so the way to treat it we really need to address the root cause of the problem working on inflammation working on each one of these elements of the proliferation stage but before we do that i will go over some of the treatment that actually doesn't work so you don't have to waste your time and money on stuff that actually does not address the root cause of the problem it's very common to see like oh ice and heat ice based on the study is just again a temporary decrease inflammation for half an hour or so so it's really not really addressing anything in uh, the root cause of the inflammation or actually doing anything to the proliferation so that's temporary electric stimulation based on the study it provides temporary pain relief for half an hour to an hour but does not provide long term but there is nothing related to electric stimulation going to do anything to inflammation and proliferation. So basically bandaging. The other thing that been used and I personally used to use before uh, using Aster tools, foam roller, which actually based on a study does not provide a long term result. And think about this way. You have inflammation and you're rubbing with the foam roller that going to inflame it more. So um, the other thing is massage, rubbing it so if you rub the inflamed area you're gonna inflame it more and when i go over the fascia layers it will make a lot of sense why foam roller does not treat anything related to our proliferation stage or massage does not because mechanically impossible to go deep and be precise with massage or foam roller to really release the adhesion of the scar tissue and fascia restrictions so the other thing is stretch a stretch based on a study if you overstretch you're gonna cause micro tear and will cause inflammation so it actually could cause more damage if you overstretch that's why i personally do not give any stretch to my patient there there are more harmful effect from the stretch than the benefit that's why uh, i have a video why you should not stretch so a strength exercise we can introduce that but if you introduce it in the early stages of inflammation you can inflame it more so how to treat it to get to the root cause of the problem we need to start to work on inflammation so first thing if you have acute morton's neuroma you should be like three five days or max a week with the rest take it easy stop wearing high heels stop doing the repetitive motion and that should resolve it for acute stage for chronic inflammation when your body going back and forth moderate to severe inflammation we have to intervene with that to decrease the inflammation so what i personally do is i give my patient the magna heel 2 they can wear it in the sock at night at home to decrease the inflammation so uh, the strength of the magnet field the force is about three inches deep so it actually can go deep to the inflamed uh, area in the foot to decrease inflammation so and the other thing i have patients do is put them on anti-inflammatory diet because certain food like refined carb refined sugar based on a study when you eat that it causes internal inflammation in your body for five hours so if you eat inflammatory food three times a day you 15 hours a day in inflammation so when you, uh, that's part of the treatment the other thing is if you have vitamins mineral hormonal imbalance that will slow down your normal healing process you need magnesium d c zinc B, for your body to transition from the inflammation state to proliferation state to maturation stage. So if you have chronic condition that your body does not heal, does not move fast, we need to really meet those deficiency. Magna Hill will not going to replace your B deficiency or magnesium or D or other vitamins and minerals. So one of the way you, we can address that, and the good news is I have a software that's called Ask Aster. It's askaster.com. It's a free online medical 
evaluation that takes about five minutes and it has at least nine healthcare provider database. So it's actually evaluate your nutrition, your cardiovascular system, your neurological system, your psychology, uh, your mental health. It's a very comprehensive medical evaluation. Make sure you take advantage of that in case if you have chronic inflammation, your body going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation. The system will guide you what you should do next to really get to the root cause of the problem because if you have deficiency manual manual work on your um infl proliferation and inflammation gonna help but not gonna replace those deficiency you might have so make sure you take advantage of ask aster so the second thing we need to work on simultaneously is the proliferation stage because you are going back and forth between those inflammation and proliferation. To do that, I'm dividing it to scar tissue, trigger points, and fascia release. So what I personally do to release the deep scar tissue, the superficial scar tissue, I use the A3 to release that. And um, I have video on how to use that in relation to inflammation for the uh, patient programs to really not causing more inflammation and work on releasing the superficial layer of the scar tissue. And I use the A5 to release deep scar tissue that in the foot, we have to release that and also to release the fascia restrictions. The other thing, and I will briefly go over is the fascia system because it's extremely overlooked by healthcare provider and extremely causing if, uh, a lot of symptoms to nerve uh, problem like Morton's neuroma. By understanding the fascia system, it will make a lot of sense why we have to address it. So briefly, I'm gonna go over it. There's another video on the fascia release or how to work on the fascia system in detail. Feel free to check it out in my channel. So, to make it complicated, it's a very complex system, but the treatment extremely simple. So, we have two big categories of fascia, superficial and deep fascia layer. So, the superficial layer, it's like a wrap surrounding the entire body, covering everything, very thin layer, wrapping everything. It's like a Spider-Man suit. So, the deep layer is actually divided to four subcategories. And as you see in this image, it's actually each layer has two two to three sub layers. And that shows you how complex, how inter uh, uh, complex that system that need to be addressed in each layer. By, by knowing these layers, it will make a lot of sense that massage or foam roller are not gonna work on the fascia release because you're really not getting into those layers. So for example, the apparatic fascia, this is a layer that's actually wrapping the entire muscle, it's in here. And then we have the epamycin, the epamycin actually, uh, the apparatic fascia, sorry, the apparatic fascia is wrapping a group of muscles. And we have the epamycin that's wrapping an individual muscle. And we have the premycin, as you see it here in this image, it's wrapping a bundle of fibers. And we have the endomycin that's wrapping each individual fiber um, muscle muscle fiber. So we have to release all those la layers and actually around your nerve there is a layer of fascia that's wrapping that. And when that's tight, it's like a, you're wearing a t-shirt two to three size smaller. It's actually going to feel like a band and suffocating the tissue underneath it. When that happens, it's actually compressed on the nerve more and you start to have more numbness and tingling. That's why we have to work on the scar tissue, the fascia restriction simultaneously because they always occur together. So what we do to release fascia restrictions? So what I do is I use the A1 and I have a link uh, underneath this video on how to get those tools to work, uh, to use it on yourself at home. So what I use, I use the A1 to release the superficial fascia restriction and the apparatic fascia restrictions. And I use the A1 
five to work on epamycin, premycin, the endomycin. This tool can go really very deep to targeting all those layers. And that's why it's impossible with knuckle or massage or foam roller to go that deep to release it. But we have to be careful because there is a protocol that I go over uh, with the uh, patient programs on how to address it not causing inflammation while you're working on a proliferation stage. So to sum it up how to treat it at home, it's very simple. First thing we need, if you're wearing high heel, you need to stop wearing high heel because that's very high risk factors. You need to stop the trigger like running, jumping, the motion that actually cause more pressure on the ball of your feet. We need to decrease that pressure so to give it time to heal. If you are in acute stage, you uh, three, five days or a week should be good enough to really get that under control if you don't have chronic inflammation. We need to do a uh, walk properly, and I'm going to have a video on that, but the point you don't want to put your weight on your uh, ball of your feet. So if you have a chronic inflammation, we have to be aggressive to address inflammation states and proliferation states simultaneously, because as you see in this image, there is a lot of swelling here. This image showing inflammation in the nerve, but actually when you look a little bit closer, there's a lot of scar tissue in that area, fascia restrictions. So we have to work on that simultaneously. For inflammation, I use a magna heal on it. I do the anti-inflammatory diet. And if you have deficiency, take advantage of Ask Aster to really figure out what inhibit or uh, prevent your body to heal properly. And lastly, for the proliferation stage, you need to work on the scar tissue, the fascia restriction trigger point simultaneously to break all these adhesion. So if you have any question or comment, leave it in the comment section below. I will answer it in the future videos. And if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and hit the notification bell so you will get a notification regarding new videos I'm posting. All right, we'll see you soon in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below or go to asterinstitute.com.